Well, for some unknown, unknown reason, our guest speaker has not arrived at this moment. So we got to continue the program, as I said, as proceed. Um, in the place of the mayor introducing, introducing the speaker, we will have Mr. Wilbur Cave, and the mayor is going to substitute for Mr. Carl Polite. And the mayor will do the keynote speaker instead of Mr. Carl Polite. We'll bring before you now Mr. Wilbur Cave to introduce the mayor. They say you always should be prepared. I had the distinct pleasure back in 1972 to have, 76, I'm sorry, 1976 to have the opportunity to serve as a campaign manager for William Holmes in his race for mayor of Allendale. Uh, I had been involved in politics and campaigns before but never had an opportunity to run one and uh, we were very successful. We had a community effort and he was elected mayor of Allendale and has since served, been re-elected three or four terms since then. Uh, back in 1989, I had the opportunity to come to Allendale to serve as your town administrator. And there's one thing that uh, has always impressed me about the mayor, uh, is that he's committed uh, to serving you as your mayor. He has gotten the experience and the knowledge. No one on the council doubts his knowledge and his know-how about the town of Allendale. He obviously has studied hard and tried to learn as much as he can about running the town of Allendale. So I've had the pleasure of working with him, and I hope that we will continue to work together for a long time to come, because I think we both have a vision of making some really great things happen in Allendale. I think the thing that's most important is, is that we don't see trying to be just like everybody else. What we, our vision of Allendale is to see it become a, a model for other communities. Other communities. So it's going to be a lot of hard work, and, and it just shows you now that he's ready to take on a role I'm sure he didn't come prepared to take, but I'm sure he'll do a good job. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I'm glad and happy to present to you your mayor, William Holmes. In the field of politics, you always uh, you should be prepared to speak at any given uh, notice. On behalf of the city of Allendale, city council, and all of its citizens, I am so delighted to have this opportunity to speak uh, to you and with you tonight. We have a lot of young people in our audience, and I want to address my, uh, my uh, few remarks, or comments, to the young people, not only the young people that are here, but the young people in our community. On last Wednesday of this week, I had an opportunity to go to the uh, Allendale Fairfax Middle School and talk about career choices. And it was career day at the Allendale uh, Fairfax Middle School. And we had an opportunity to talk with many uh, students during uh, last Wednesday. And one of the things that I learned that I gained from the career day section that most of the students, at least the seventh and eighth grade uh, students that I talked to, pretty much have their mind made up about you know, their career choices. And I think that is indicative of the parents, uh, the school, the council involved in the, uh, in the uh, students. Getting the student to know what they would like to be when they become an adult. I placed on the board at, during the uh, section a uh, number of, of careers. I put on the board engineer, and most of the students did not know what an engineer does. Uh, I put on the, uh, on the board football, professional football. Everybody in the class knew what a professional football player is. And I put a basketball in similar response. <laughs> But there are many opportunities in a lot of different areas 
And we must, as parents and as community leaders and as uh, school officials, um, help to make our kids aware of the many career opportunities that are out there. Let me ask the young people who are here, name me one career that you can participate in and not have to go to school. That primary school, elementary school, middle school, high school, or college, name me one career that you can be successful at and don't have to go to school. Anyone know of any career? Anyone? When I say football, it, okay. what do you need in order to become a professional football player? First of all, let me outline what you have to do. First, you have to go to primary school. You have to go through elementary school. You have to go through middle school. You have to go through high school. And what next? Can you play professional football without going to college? Anyone? Okay, young boys, young boys. If you are, if you have your goals set on being a professional football player, what do you have to do? You have to go through primary school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. All those schools involve training and education. Okay, now if I ask you if you want to be a career of being a nobody, do you have to go to school? How many of you have decided that you want a career of being a nobody? Anyone here decided, say, well, I'm going to make my career as being a nobody? Or being an alcoholic? Or being a drug addict? Has anyone in here decided that they want to be a nobody? It is very easy to be a nobody. To be a nobody, you do not have to work at all. You don't have to try to be a nobody and you become a nobody. Now, if you have decided that you want a career as being a nobody, what I, decide, what I suggest to you tonight, drop out of school. You don't have to go to school to become a nobody. Save your parents' money. It costs your parents a lot of money to send you through school. You go through primary school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and college, then become a nobody. That is a very expensive path to take in order to become a nobody. You can decide right now, kids, that I do not want to go to school. I want to become a nobody. I want to become a drug addict. I want to become an alcoholic. Career choices, that's what we're talking about. Are you going to decide to become a nobody? I haven't heard a response. Anyone here want to be a nobody? One of the comments that, that one of the uh, students made in the, uh, at the uh, career day session on last Wednesday, uh, they told me that the teacher's giving them too much hard work. I am tired of doing this work for the teacher. I am tired of doing homework for the teachers. Those are some of the comments I heard uh, in the uh, career day session on last Wednesday. How many of you, the students, are doing work for the teacher? Raise your hand if you're doing a lot of work for the teacher. Raise your hand. Someone doing the work for the teachers? How many of you are doing the work because you're doing the work for your parents? You're doing the work for your parents. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, man. If you One of the things, students, you have to learn that when your teachers give you an assignment, that assignment is for your benefit. You are to learn the material, and you have to gain information and knowledge about that material. So in order to be successful in primary school, what do you got to do? You got to study hard. In order to be successful in elementary school, what do you got to do? You got to study hard. You got to work hard. How to be successful in middle school? You got to work hard. You got to study hard. If you study hard and work hard, you will be successful in your studies. Again, if you want to make F, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to try. You don't have to. You don't have to bring your book home. Leave your books in your locker. Why carry those heavy books around if you're not going to open them and study? How many of you bring book home and never open up on, on the weekend? <laughs> why are you carrying those why are you carrying those heavy books around if you're not going to use them? Students, if you're not going to leave, use your book, leave them in your, in your locker. If you decide that you're going to fail in primary, elementary, the middle school, high school, if you decided that you want to fail, why go through the charade of carrying your books around? How many of you have decided that you're not gonna not gonna be successful in your class? Has anyone here decided? How many of you decided that you want to work hard and do your best? Boy, we got some good students in here. Everyone. Okay, put your hand down. Let me ask you another question. How many of you have already decided on a, on a career? <coughs> Put your hand down. When I name a few of the uh, career choices, I want to see your hand uh, go up. Doctor. Okay, put your hand down. Lawyer. Teacher. A nurse, nurse. A professional football player. Okay, boys. In order to become a professional football player, what are you going to have to do? What is the avenue to get to become a professional football player? College. Not one professional football player today is on, not one member on a professional football te uh, team today um, that have gotten there without going through college. There's only been a few in the history of professional football. Only a few in, in terms of professional football. And in terms of professional basketball, there's only been a few that have gone out of high school and went to the professional basketball and have been successful. So college is the avenue. And how do you want to get to college? You got to finish high school. You can't get to college on a certificate of completion. You got to have a diploma to get to a college. And you got to have certain grade average. So what I'm saying to you tonight, young people, if you have not developed a good steady habit, start now.
If you have not disciplined yourself to turn that television off or put up that Nintendo set, start now. When I got out of high school several years ago, I wasn't able to uh, uh, go directly into college and complete. I started, my parents money ran out and I went into the Air Force. And I uh, did some studying while I was in the Air Force, picked up several credits. And when I came out, I completed my uh, college education at Voorhees College. And I was employed at Savannah Riverside with DuPont back in the early 70s. Now I could have come out of the Air Force and gone and got a job and not go to college to improve and better myself. But you have to decide what your career choice is going to be. Start now, preparing. If you're going to be a doctor, what do you need to do? Start reading about all the sciences, biology, chemistry. If you're going to be a lawyer, you need to know something about law, you need to know something about political subdivision, government. If you're going to be a teacher, if you have excellent teachers in, in your school system, model yourself after those excellent teachers. If you're going to be an engineer, you're going to have to love math, you're going to have to love physics, you're going to have to love geometry, all the ma mathematical disciplines. Don't say, I want to be a doctor and hate biology. I want to be a doctor and hate chemistry. That's a contradiction. I want to be an electrical engineer and hate mathematics. So develop those interests now. If I ask you, name me a, a rap a music star, you could readily name a rapper, right? Name me one rap music star. You know Hammer? Okay. Okay, name me one jazz musician. Name me one country and western music star. Name me one chemical engineer. Name me one chemical engineer. Name me one electrical engineer. Name, name me a, a nurse. Name me a doctor. Name me a lawyer. Can you name me a, a lawyer? The reason I give you this example, young people, listen up now, listen up. The reason I give you this example, where your love and interest are, you learn a lot about it, right? If your interest and love is in music, you learn a lot about it, right? Now, if your love and interest is in engineering, or in doctoring, or in nursing, or in teaching, you learn a lot about it, right? 
So we have to create those interests and those love in those other disciplines in, so that we can learn a lot about it. When I was coming up as a kid, I know about baseball because of my interest. But I try to learn about other things too. I learn about the music, all type of music, country and western, jazz, rock, rap. So you have to expand your, your knowledge of information. Let me ask you a question, or a history question. What continent did civilization begin? Let me get back to the career choices. Young people, in order to become a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, you gonna have to commit yourself to those disciplines. To be a somebody, it gonna require a lot of hard work. It gonna require a lot of burning the midnight oil, studying. To be a success in life requires a lot of hard work. It doesn't come easy. And it takes many years, many, many years. I'm always striving to learn just a little more. Always striving. I'm home reading the newspaper, watching the news, listening to news on, on, on radio, different kind of program, always trying to expand your knowledge. And you're never too young to learn, and you never get too old to learn. Never too young to learn. And parents, let us get out of this notion that that it's gonna hurt our kid if we push them and encourage them to learn. I don't know where we got that that false concept from. It's not gonna hurt. This, that child brains, if you encourage that child to learn, I heard some remark, you're pushing that child too hard, that child gonna go crazy. That child will go crazy from lack of knowledge, and lack of learning, and lack of discipline. We only use about 10% of our mental capacity. The brilliance, people in this world only use about 10%. Look at all that reserve we have that we don't utilize and use. Encourage your child to do his or her very best. Get involved with your children. When they have activities at the school, be there. When they have activities in the community that involve your, your children or your child, be there. Support your child. And your child will not surprise you. I am what I am because of my grandmama and my mama and the people around me. I reflect my mama and my grandmama personality. I reflect their behavior and their characteristics. I reflect my brother and sister characteristics because we grew up together, share things together. And your child whether you want to believe it or not, reflect your character, your characteristic, your trait. If you don't think so, let me video tape your child and play it back to you, and you'll see your child almost a spitting image of yourself. The mannerism, the way the child walks, the way the child behaves and talk, reflect the people around them, the environments around them. So it's very important that you be on your best at all times around your kids. I know it's not possible at all times, but your child gonna pick up your mannerism, your behavior, your characteristics. That's true.
true. One thing I would like to conclude with, young people, that no matter what the odds are, no matter what the circumstances are, try to do your best. You seek out help. If you need information, seek out help. Get with your older brother, older sister. They can explain certain things to you. If you need an adult to help, you know, call on responsible adult. Someone out there are committed to help you, but you have to ask for help. And by all means, always keep your head up. Look people in the eye. Stand up at all times and be a young man and young woman. Be proud of who you are. You are God's chosen people. God created all of us. And in God's eyesight, you are somebody. You might not have the material thing that other people have, but in God's eyesight, you are somebody. You are very important. And God needs you to carry out his work. You cannot carry out God's work being an alcoholic or being a drug addict or being a nobody. So again, when you evolve in sport, remember, teamwork, good sportsmanship. Play the game fair. Play the game hard, but play the game fair. Nothing wrong with playing hard, but play it fair. So you can grow up with those attitudes and life will treat you fair. I thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. And anytime, young people, if you want to talk to me, I'm in the phone book, call. If you want to talk to any of the city council people, if you don't know about government, how government works, call us. If you want to come down to the town hall, uh, Mr. Cave and other people are down there, you can come to the town hall anytime. <laughs> Feel free to learn about your city government, learn about government in general. Again, we thank the sponsor, the Booster Club, all the adults involved with their children here tonight, the coaches. Again, my hat's off to you. You're doing an excellent work. Sometimes you may not get the, the, the public comment from the city official, but we know you're doing a, a fine and outstanding job. So we look around here, the number of kids and parents here tonight is a testimony of your involvement, your commitment. And I close with this. Uh, Wilbur made a comment about Morris Holm and his commitment over these past 30 odd years. Now we all can get committed. We all can do our own part. Don't look around and say, well, John Doe is not doing his part, or Susie May is not doing her, her part. Look at self and say, what part am I playing? And if you answer, I'm playing an important part, then that's positive. <coughs> don't look at the negative, like we always say, don't look at the negative all the time. There are a lot of positive things going on in our community. Again, I can talk forever. But I, I see some of the kids are getting, they say, men are going to stand there all night. Some of y'all saying that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the kids are out there, though. <laughs> Okay, remember, career choices. Remember, when I say doctor, the next time, I want, to, I want you all to call me some doctor's name. When I say chemical engineer, I want you to call me, I want to be a chemical engineer. Go home, if you've got a encyclopedia, a dictionary, look up those terms. I'm not gonna tell you what they do. You look up those terms, chemical engineer, electrical engineer, you'll find out those, those are very exciting fields. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh